But by connecting our stories and our history, we can understand and empathize with other groups and vice versa. And we can forge the political alliances that we lacked in 1942, but which we gained in the 1980s when redress was successful. We can, for example, appreciate the surveillance of uh, Muslims and hate crimes, which have increased dramatically since the wall guy declared Mexicans, Muslims, and Syrians uh, should not belong in this country. But we can also make the psychological leap, it's a small step, to the Black Lives Matter movement. Because <laughs> maybe, maybe we don't suffer the same kind of indignities daily or have to tell our children, please be careful. You know, if, if something, if you see a police officer, geez, be afraid and be respectful. There's so many things that uh, African Americans have to experience that we don't experience, but we can understand the concept of racial profiling. And it came home to me a little more deeply when I read an interview of an African American professor at San Francisco State, where I live in San Francisco. And in the last number of years, he was stopped 35 times. And, he said he was wearing a suit most of the time, uh, stopped by police, uh, and it resulted in not just in just not one arrest, but each time he thought he was going to be killed. So it's an experience that while we don't have directly, you know, we could think about that and perhaps understand and empathize. So in the end, let's just remember the lessons uh, that history is not static, that the enemies of history, people like Michelle Malkin, need to be confronted need to be opposed. Um, many, uh, and we marry activism with uh, the knowledge of history because justice is not self-executing. It is not a gift, it's a challenge. And we cannot rely just on our institutions to protect us. We need allies of all colors and races like we had for the redress movement. We should understand that dissent is not the enemy of patriotism. Uh, Fred Gordon Min, the Heart Mountain Resisters, the 1800th Battalion, all dissented, and they acted with the noblest of motives. They were reviled. They were pariahs. They were outcasts. They were called disloyal. But today, we call them he heroes because history has proven them right. In 1942, very few people dissented from the government's decision to incarcerate Japanese Americans. The president issued Executive Order 9066, Congress uh, supported him unanimously, and the Supreme Court meekly acquiesced to the government's uh, un, uh, or false claims, and we experienced a civil rights disaster. We have to know that it's our political birthright to dissent. It's our historical legacy. I think it's our duty as Americans to do so. So I hope we can use our knowledge of history, our moral authority, our will to do something, to speak out, to ensure that the terrible injustices that we've experienced as a people will never be repeated.